How's everybody doing? Let's do some introductions just so I know who all is on the call. Um, I'm Amy. Um, my daughter was, I guess, the the case that got, <laughs> I don't know. I found out about involved. my daughter. I went straight to a Dr. Newman at Manual. Um, and then from there, we got with the detectives, did a forensic interview, and he was, uh, Donnie was released or suspended rather. And then he's, you know, then he's locked up. So, but she's only 17. So we're kind of keeping her out of, out of the media as much as possible. Well, we've got, we've got you as Amy J and that may be um, uh, anonymous enough to keep yeah. people from figuring it out. And I like They'll that. They'll figure it out sooner or later. So that's right. <laughs> that's right. Sure. Yeah. My name's Alexis. Um, I went to Evangel Christian most of my high school career um, and Ronnie and Donnie were my football coaches from sophomore to junior summer to my senior year. So like 2005, six and seven. <clears throat> and I mean, I was a victim of both, I guess, um, more so Donnie than Ronnie, but they were my football coaches at Evangel, met them when I was 14 or 15 the summer between my sophomore to junior year and they were my coaches for um my high school career as a football player played with the boys to be clear did you tell me that they left evangel is that the name of it evangel christian yes ma'am yeah. when uh rumors started circulating yes there was especially my senior year um there's the parent that said they'll talk to whoever um, parents went to like the pastor, the administrator, the principal, the athletic director, and was like, Alexis is in an inappropriate relationship because it was obvious they started sending a parent and we would stay overnight, um, at hotels. So they actually had a parent, Danya, who connected me with Ariel that, um, would try to like, she said, she's trying to protect me. She, the head coach came to him and was like, to protect me. So there was a lot of like reports made. And then when I graduated in 2007 is when they left. So they were, my senior year was their last year of coaching. They went to Fern Creek in 2008. At least Ronnie did. I don't know about Donnie. Okay. And uh, did things take place on those overnight stays? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. And so people knew and they just looked away. Well, they reported it. And nothing was done. A, a female parent was sent with me to um, to the overnight games to the hotel, but she sent an email to the news stations saying that, um, and I can send you that email because it, it's public. She sent an email to the school, uh, well, to the news stations about the head coach coming to her and asking her to kind of like be there as protection when we went overnight and stay at all the hotel rooms. But she said that Ronnie and Donnie would come and get me like really late at night and say they wanted me to clean equipment or go over drills. And she would say no. And they would say, you're the parent where the coaches were getting her. So she said after she reported it and after several games, she just, there was nothing she could do. I can send you that email. And we would get like slaughtered by teams here. Like we would lose. So they made us go out of town every week for football. So we wouldn't give you about like 200. It would just be a hundred. We really were terrible. So we would travel like to Pikeville to, to Hainesville. Yeah. Not as bad as Louisville, but still very embarrassing. Um, so we would stay overnight. So what they did was they would send us in two vans because we had a small team. There's like 11 of us in two vans to the high school on Friday night, where, wherever we were playing we would stay at a hotel in that city that Friday night. Then we would do a college visit on Saturday. So we went to like University of the Cam of Cumberland, Campbellsville, um, Berea, stuff like that. We would do college visits after we went to Tennessee. Like we did, I don't know, Tennessee something. But we would we would go to the football games Friday nights. Always stay at a hotel on Friday night, and then Saturday do a um, do a college visit. Come back to Louisville Saturday night. Um, hi, I'm Alyssa. Okay. Um, I don't know what information I'm supposed to give, um, but my relationship was with Ronnie. 2016-2017, I was 13. I went to Newburgh Middle School at the time. Was he the found her in 2022 from when it okay. happened. Okay, I'm Ariel, Ronnie's daughter. Um, I don't really know, like, 
I was his victim from sixth grade, which is, I don't really remember what year I started sixth grade, maybe 2014, 2015, because you know it's two years in a school year, but it was around that time when it started, and then it ended in 2021. Okay, and did you also go to no to Newburgh? Yeah. Okay, so was was this happening simultaneously? Did you guys know each other and know what was happening at the time? No, we 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 seen each other at school, but we wasn't friends or nothing. We didn't talk. But as far as from net from looking back, was it going on at the same time, or do you think it was yeah. different times? Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, because okay. mine went from twenty fourteen all the way to twenty twenty one, so it was yep. both. How old were you, um, Ariel, when all this, when when Alexis was being uh, abused? Have you guys figured well, this out? You two thousand four, right, Alexis? Yeah, I was one years old. Oh dear. Yeah, we both were. And um, Amy's daughter wasn't born yet. Oh dear. I'm sorry. That's that's pause worthy. I need to take a, a breath. Um. Yeah, it's just, and that's what another thing I think that we want to bring attention to is the fact that this has been going on, like, like Alexis is 32 years old, my daughter's 17 years old. So this has been something that's been going on for this many years. And I think as we saw on um, Facebook last night with all of the records being exposed, it's something that's definitely been brought to people's attention and then swept under the rug, which is again, just able to you know able to other victims to be victimized absolutely, absolutely. and, and um, we think that so donnie and ronnie's first um job with children was at evangel so they were 2021 20, i think they were 21 yeah evangel was the first place they worked with kids jcyc was like 2009 So, so they Evangel was the first place that they worked with children anywhere or teenagers, high schoolers, whatever. Because they were themselves in 2021. And you told me that um, you, th you thought he was your boyfriend. Yes. Yep. So what did that look like to others? Was it a secret? Did he tell you to keep it a secret? At first, yes, but then it became more open. So I was around, um, you know, family, friends. We would go out. He would pick me up. I would spend the night at his house. We would do things together. So it wasn't really, like, in my teenage mind, like, that was my boyfriend. That was, like, my first serious relationship. Tell her about the party promotion, the clubs, Alexis. So, I yeah, that's important, one. too. Yes. So is that, I, I don't know if that's correct or yet or what. It is. Getting. It is. It is. Okay. And a bunch of people brought it up. So they ran an entertainment business called Through the Roof Entertainment, like Through the Roof Entertainment, where they threw 18 and over 21 and over parties at club stages. Um, it's not a club anymore, but it was on Dixie Highway behind the dollar store near Shively Apartments. Um so they were party promoters and they owned an entertainment business with two of their best friends. Um, and I went to some of the parties while I was underage. Um, they got me in. I got alcohol, things like that. And they had just started it. So I, I don't know. So they were born in 84 and this was, so I guess they were 21. Um, so they had just started through the roof entertainment when they started coaching um, at Evangel. That was their other job. Ariel, didn't they use your picture on a on a twenty one and over party flyer? What kind of picture? It was a baby picture of me in a onesie and a diaper. That's fucking weird. That Excuse is very. Mind. It's kind of creepy. It almost sounds like pedos like, come yeah, over, like promoting pedophilia a little bit. Yeah, yeah. pedos come to go to any party as a grown up. Unless it's like a baby shower, like a one year old's birthday, whatever, you know. A child should, a baby shouldn't be on a, a grown ass flyer for grown people. No, and this was a flyer for a twenty one and over party at a at a nightclub. Right, a a baby shouldn't be on that. No, no. no. What? Like I told you before, it doesn't matter if you how old you was. Like you was a kid, he should have stopped that. It don't matter if you went to absolutely. Video. Naked, like, hey, I want you. He's supposed he's supposed to stop you. Yes. Yeah. 
that's all part of the grooming effect that took place on yes with everybody. I mean, I can speak uh, for myself, and I think others. Mo- most of these victims, there is no father in the picture, right? Yeah, there because what what they what they have the right to do as teachers and JCPS is pull up students' files, and with that, I know that Donnie um, pulled up my daughter's files. So that he could, he like stalked me on Facebook. Basically, he before he even spoke to her, he knew how many siblings that she had. He knew there wasn't a, a father in the picture. Um, he, you know, he knew all of that. So they, they, I think they are pretty specific when they go after their victims. And you all can stop me if I'm, if I'm saying something that's not correct. But no, um, not at all. They were very. Yeah. We were all troubled, and most of us didn't have fathers. Yeah, they were. They were very strategic about who they picked. But I know as far as um as concerned, um Donnie actually like showed her news articles and news clips or people in you know a power position have gotten in trouble for this before and repetitively told her if this no. ever comes out, you have to protect me, you have to protect me. Wow. Yeah. So that even shows that he knows what he was doing was criminal. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. They both did. I mean, basically, so chronologically, like I said, 2005 through 2007, that was their first job with kids. Um, They had the entertainment business. It happened. It started the summer of my sophomore year between my sophomore and junior year and continued on until after I graduated when I was 17. So it continued to after I graduated. Um. Mine was mainly Donnie, but I also had relations with Ronnie. Um, and it was, it like I said, at first it was, it was kind of more hidden and more strategic. But as it progressed, it was, you know, people knew, people saw me. There were rumors. So I do believe, and I don't know this to be a fact, but I do believe they left Evangel because it got so bad that there were so many people saying things. So I graduated in 2007. Ronnie went to Fern Creek in 2008. I don't know if Donnie went straight to J.C. Wassey or somewhere else. Um, And basically after I was 18, after about my second semester of college, because I was 17 in my first one, um, we really didn't have much contact. I haven't had any recent contact with him or anything. Um, I found out about this because one of the football parents sent me a message and said, oh my God, did this happen to you with the, with Donnie's article? And that's, I didn't know Amy, her daughter, Ariel, unless anybody else this happened to, um, the football parent just kind of connected me and Ariel and it went from there. So, and I'm much older by at least 10 or 12 years than everybody else. So, I mean, to my knowledge, nobody's came out before me. This was their first instance, but my concern is like, I think Amy and Alyssa said, this has been a pattern that's went on for for so long. So it's twenty. It's two thousand twenty three. It started in two thousand five. That's eighteen right. years. That's so, right. That's about two decades. Yeah. That's so. That's, well, me and Ariel. That's our entire life since we yeah. were kids. And there's no way that they're gonna do it, get away with it once, and then just stop. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's no uh, way it's yeah. just me and Amy's daughter because that's a period of seventeen years that he didn't do anything with any minor. And that's just not true. Like, I know people are going to come out because you can't tell me this man is 20, 21. He has a whole relationship with a child that's under his watch playing football. And then it stops until 17 years later when he finds somebody at a different school. That's just, there's so many more of us, but. I think I it's mean, just people that are still scared to come out, right? And the way yeah. they were so heavily, it almost put, and still, still Alexis to this day has a a, a a feeling of a little guilt because they were just groomed so mm-hmm. so much it's just, it's just, it's disgusting right yeah it's two things it's um uh statutory because of mm-hmm. the because of the age but it's also abuse of power because Correct. of their position over them so mm-hmm. um you know it's 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 more than just um you know the grooming piece of it like that's right and I talked to Amy's daughter and like like Amy said I'm I'm grown I'm very much this would happen a long time ago but there still are those feelings of like guilt and shame and betrayal and things like that because 
of just what it is. Like it's it's sick that even you know almost two decades after, it, it I really still is emotional baggage. Like no matter how much you know we can move forward and grow and try to let go, there is certain things about us as women like that we just will never be able to let go. How we raise our children, how we look at the world, how we view men. Mm -hmm. um how we like in relationships like there's so many things outside of just crying yourself to sleep every night that right. like affect us really really on a daily basis that that they don't understand you know what I'm saying to them it was their minute of pleasure but like to us this really is going to raise how I raise my or affect how I raise my child in the future and that's that is fucked up right yeah. and that um I think I talked to all three of you all about the fact that you know they have I think you all do you all have kids yeah, I do yes yeah. Okay, I mean, so all, they all have kids. Um, and how are they? They're they're going to be sitting at work one day with their daughters in high school and thinking, you know, is this happening to my child? Like, are they yeah, going to be afraid to send their kids to JCPS, knowing what you know what all they've done to kind of like brush this under the rug so that it doesn't get out to protect their reputation? Right. Yeah. And I think mentally, like what Alyssa said, is that like. I'm in the mental health field. I've been doing this for a long time, but like even I put mine in the back of my head because it was really traumatic and just tried not to think about it. And if I would have known that he was going to continue, I would absolutely have reported it. So it didn't happen to other people potentially, but the things that it leaves us with like now having to kind of relive my trauma and all this stuff, mm -hmm. like things that I didn't think were an issue or an issue, like it's affected my relationships, you know, my overall mental health, just how easily you get triggered and, yeah. you know, things that you'll see or something like that, that, that will just trigger you and ruin your whole day. Like emotionally, it's, it's very difficult, even if it's been 20 years ago. And this is stuff that no matter how much therapy or, you know, psychiatric treatment or healing or, or self love, whatever we do, it's still going to be there and affect us for the rest of our lives and affect the people around us too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So I had told my friend I was planning on running away or whatever. So um, I went to work and I got dropped. Okay, so I got dropped off at work. And when I got there, I called the police basically like, hey, I'm trying to run away. I'm scared for my life, blah, blah, blah. And then I was just telling him like this is going on I've been going on that I've been getting up about my dad for like years. And then they was like, Well, I hope you're not just saying this so you can run away. And I'm like, No, it's really happening. So um they came and they talked to me and was just like, We gotta file a report, get you a detective, like all that stuff. Um I went to live with my mom and then after that. I think a detective reached out to her a few times uh, through email, but after that, it's just like nothing else happened after that. Like it got real quiet. I didn't hear from him, didn't hear from no detective or anything like that. Everybody just stopped reaching out. So I, I gave up on it and I was like, felt like real discouraged about it. So I just let it go, tried to forgive and forget. 